and to adopt laws protecting and promoting the health and general welfare of the Oglala Sioux Tribe and its members. And whereas under Article 4, Section 1I of the Tribal Constitution, the Tribal Council has the authority to remove trespassers and to exclude and remove persons from within the boundaries of the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. And whereas pursuant to Article 4, Section 1I, the Oglala Sioux Tribe has adopted the Oglala Sioux Tribe Law and Order Code, Chapter 10, Removal of Non-Members, 1996, as amended, which provides that any non-member of the Oglala Sioux Tribe may be removed and excluded from all or any part of the lands within the exterior boundaries of the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. And for the reasons set forth in Chapter 10, and whereas chapter 10 of the law and order code provides among other things that non-members may be excluded for the commission of a crime as defined by federal, state, or tribal law, including violations of state and tribal traffic regulations and for breach of the peace. And whereas act, acting pursuant to authority granted by resolution number 21-95 April 7, 2021, the tribal president initiated removal proceedings in the Oglala Sioux Tribal Court for the exclusion and removal of non-member Shane Curtis Coombs from all tribal land within the exterior boundaries of the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. And that action is captioned in the matter of the application for exclusion and removal of non-member Shane Curtis Coombs from the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation Case number CIV-21-0376. And whereas in the tribal court action, it is alleged that Mr. Coombs has committed multiple violations of federal, tribal, or state laws, including one, assault by striking, beating, or wounding a 70-year-old Lakota elder on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in violation of 18 U.S.C. subsection 113A4, and 1152, for which he was convicted in case number CR-99-50017. And two, possession with intent to distribute methamphetamine, a controlled substance in violation of 21 USC subsection 841-AL, 841-B1-B, for which he was convicted in case number 507-CR50085-001. And three, impersonation to deceive a law enforcement officer in violation of SDCL section 22-40-1 for which he was convicted in case number 51C9600222278O. And four, grand theft in violation of SDCL section 22-30A-17, for which he was charged and entered a stipulation for restitution in case number 56C0600271A0. And five, grand theft in violation of SDCL section 22-301-17, for which he was charged and entered a stipulation for restitution in case number 23C0700064A0. And possession of methamphetamine, a controlled substance in violation of SDCL section 22-45-5, for which he was charged and entered a stipulation for restitution in case number 23C0700012A0. And speeding on a state highway in violation of SDCL section 32-25-1.1 and driving without a valid driver's license in violation of SDCL section 32-12-22 
for which he was ticketed in case number 51POA1600688181. And speeding and eight speeding on other roadways in violation of SDCL section 32-25-7 for which he was ticketed in case number 51POA1800393 and nine speeding on other roadways 26 plus miles per hour over the speed limit in violation of SDCL section 32-25-7 for which he was ticketed in case number 46POA19-000511 and 10 speeding on a state highway and SDCL for which he was ticketed in case number 51POA21-001770 and whereas in the tribal court action it is also alleged that Mr. Coombs has or may have engaged in conduct that constitutes trespass on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation including but not limited to driving or grazing livestock without permission on tribal land and or trust allotments and such conduct if proven would be a violation of federal law including but not limited to 25 CFR part 166 subpart I trespass and a violation of tribal law including but not limited to the Oglala Sioux Tribe Agricultural Land Trespass Ordinance OST Ordinance number 20-24 and section 112 of the Oglala Sioux Tribe Criminal Offense Code Ordinance number 02-25. And whereas in the tribal court action, it is also alleged that Mr. Coons has or may have engaged in conduct that constitutes a, constitutes a breach of peace. And whereas the tribal council is aware of allegations that Mr. Coons has or may have engaged in contact conduct that would constitute theft of livestock on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation and such conduct if proven would be a violation of federal, tribal, or state law. And whereas the Tribal Council enacted Ordinance Number 22-05 to provide, among other things, for an alternative procedure for the exclusion and removal of non-members in addition to a judicial hearing before the Oglala Sioux Tribal Court and that alternative procedure is an administrative hearing before the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council. Now therefore be it resolved that the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council hereby authorizes and directs the tribe acting by and through its attorneys to file with the Oglala Sioux Tribal Court a notice of voluntary dismissal without prejudice of in the matter of application for exclusion and removal of non-member Shane Curtis Coombs from the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. Case number CIV-21-0376. Oglala Sioux Tribal Court. And be it further resolved that having received information and having been apprised of allegations that cause may exist for the exclusion and removal of non-member Shane Curtis Coombs from all tribal land within the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. The Oglala Sioux Tribal Council hereby authorizes and directs the tribal president or the vice president to cause notice to be served to Shane Curtis Coombs to show cause and at, a, in, at an administrative hearing before the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council why he should not be excluded and removed from all tribal land within the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. And be it further resolved that the Tribal Council hereby authorizes the Tribal Secretary to set a date for the hearing to make sure and to make sure in setting the date that adequate notice may be given to Mr. Coombs in advance of the hearing. And be it further resolved that pursuant to Oglala Sioux Tribal Law and Order Code Chapter 10, removal of non-members as amended by ordinance number 22-05. Mr. Coombs shall receive notice of the grounds for proposed exclusion and removal together with the other information required by chapter 10 at least 10 days in advance of the hearing. And be it further resolved that the hearing 
before the Tribal Council shall be conducted in accordance with Chapter 10 of the Law and Order Code as amended by Ordinance Number 22-05. And at the hearing, Mr. Coombs shall have the opportunity to confront and cross-examine the witnesses against him, to present written and oral evidence in his defense, and to be represented by counsel of his choice. And if Mr. Coombs appears and disputes the factual basis for exclusion based on a violation of federal, tribal, or state criminal laws, then a majority of the tribal council members present and voting must find as a condition to exclusion that the facts supporting the same have been established by clear, unequivocal, and convincing evidence. And be it finally resolved that the tribal president, tribal vice president, and tribal secretary may take all necessary action in furtherance of this resolution. Motion to approve. We have a motion by Councilwoman second. Whitehorse, second by Councilman Steele and Councilwoman Spiderbear. Is that correct, Councilwoman Spiderbear? Okay. Any questions or comments? Hearing or seeing none, Madam Secretary, can you call the vote, please? Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Hoorah. Cora Whitehorse? Yes. Ryan Jumpin' Eagle, Sr. Yes. Gerald Knoyer, Jr. Yes. Austin Watkins, Sr. Tyler Yellowboy? Yes. Wendell Youngman, Jr. Yes. Ron DeBray? No. Oh. James Cross? Yes. Ella Giancarlo? Yes. George Dreamer Jr. Yes. Jillian Spotted Bear. Yes. Richard Ironcloud. Yes. David Puyer. Yes. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Ah. Uh -huh. Jackie Sears. Uh huh. Garfield Steele. Craig Dillon. Yes. Council that passes 18 unanimous. Councilman. Um, I would like to make a motion that we utilize Attorney Gunn to present on behalf of the tribe at this hearing. And then I have another motion. So we have a motion to use Attorney Gunn at this hearing. Do we have a second? Second by Councilman Spotted Bear, Councilman Hawkins. Any questions or comments? Hearing or seeing none, Madam Secretary, can you call the vote, please? Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Oh. Cora Whitehorse. Yes. Ryan Jumpin' Eagle, Sr. Yes. Gerald Kenoyer, Jr. Yes. Austin Watkins, Sr. Tyler Yellowboy. Yes. Wendell Youngman, Jr. Yes. Ron DeBray. Oh. James Crow? Yes. Ella Giancarlo? Yes. George Dreamer Jr.? Yes. Jillian Spotted Bear? Yes. Richard Ironcloud? Yes. David Puyer? Yes. Sonia Little Hawk Weston? Ah. Jackie Sears? Uh huh. Garfield Still? Craig Dillon? Yes. Council that passes 18 unanimous. Councilwoman Whitehorse. Thank you. I would like to make a motion that um, we utilize um, an administrative law judge to preside over the hearing. So a motion by Councilman Whitehorse to use a ALJ. We got a second by Councilman Hawkins and Councilman Ironcloud. Any questions or comments? Okay. Hearing none, Madam Secretary, can you call the vote please? Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Oh. Cora Whitehorse? Yes. Ryan Jumpin' Eagle, Sr. Yes. Gerald Kenoyer, Jr. Oh, huh. 
Austin Watkins Sr. Tyler Yellowboy. Yes. Wendell Youngman Jr. Yes. Ron Dubray. Oh. James Cross. Yes. Ella John Carlo. Yes. George Dreamer Jr. Yes. Jillian Spotted Bear. Yes. Richard Ironcloud. Yes. David Puyer. Yes. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Ah. Jackie Sears. Uh huh. Garfield Steele. Craig Dillon. Yes. Council that passes 18 unanimous. Councilman Spotify. Uh, okay. Um, my, my, I would like to make a motion that this hearing be held by June 30th, which gives approximately 15 days if we take out the council meeting days so that the hearing, that'll be my motion to have a deadline for the hearing on June 30th. Um, Cora? <laughs> yes, Mr. Gunn. Uh, just that the, the, your, your code does say that it's from the date that he gets that return receipt card. It's from the date of the return receipt card, 10 days from that date. Steve, I just don't want this to drag on forever. If we're going yeah. to do it, then we need to do it. So okay. I think that if we give them 15 days from the day of the return receipt or whatever, but it needs to happen. We can't just take action now like they did in 1999 and allow it to sit for 22 years. I understand. If you said July 8th, that gives a little bit of breathing room, but if you want to stay with June 30th, it's your motion. Okay, I'll, I'll say July 8th. The deadline, the absolute latest. So the motion by Councilwoman Whitehorse to have the date of July 8th. We have a second by Councilman Ironcloud. Any questions or comments? Hearing or seeing none, Madam Secretary, can you call the vote, please? Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Oh. Cora Whitehorse? Yes. Ryan Jumpin' Eagle, Sr. Yes. Gerald Kenoyer, Jr. Yes. Austin Watkins, Sr. Tyler Yellowboy? Yes. Wendell Youngman, Jr. Yes. Ron DeBray? Oh. James Cross? Yes. Ella John Carlo? Yes. George Streamer Jr.? Yes. Jillian Spotted Bear? Yes. Richard Ironcloud? Sorry. Yes. David Puyer? Yes. Sonia Little Hawk Weston? Ah. Jackie Sears? Uh huh. Garfield Still? Craig Dillon? Yes. Council that passes 18 unanimous. Councilman Night Horse, is that all of the action needed for that? Yes, thank you. Yep, thank you. All right, so moving on, um, that was our last two thirds item, so we'll move on to our main event, which is the OSC Law and Order Committee, the OSC Election Code. I'll turn it over to Chairman Watkins. Thank you, Vice Chair. Um, I think we went through this. You guys all got the Oglasu Tribe Election Code, sent it a week ago, I think. You guys could look at it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and have it open. Vice Chair, you go ahead and handle it. Sure thing, yep. So, like Chairman said, we're gonna open it up. So if anybody has any comments to start off the discussion. Yes, Councilman Steele. Yeah, um, I know in our working session, there was some points that we just needed um, uh, kind of like a full decision made by the body. And I think Rayan probably could point some of those out that we couldn't come to a, a decision in law and order. So we left it open for the council to determine that. But she does know which points those were. Thank you, Councilman. So Rayan, um 
do have those points and if you could also let us know what page they're on so we can all get there together and and follow along please thank you okay so i have it on the zoom screen can people see it yeah it's very small but it is up there i'm trying to make it big okay so <clears throat> Uh, the working group went through this section by section. Um, the changes that needed, I highlighted where the changes were and then um, where, uh, where there might have been a question. And I, I think on this, so looking at section four, that's your first change under background check. And um, so the criminal background check shall be conducted according to the requirements of NCIC or III inter interstate identification index by the Oglala Sioux Tribes Human Resources Department. And so it was um, stated at that time that the Human Resources Department will not be doing the background checks. So we took that out. Um, I highlighted it because I don't, I didn't know if you guys wanted to insert uh, who will be doing it or just leave it since this is just the definitions um, at this point here. So any guidance on that? Um, I think that in place of human resources, it will be the tribal court, uh, Department of Corrections and um, the election commission's PACER account. And so the reason why this is highlighted is there's um, the background check for the election commission um, I'm not sure if it's kind of a conflict to have the election commission do their own background check. So that, that was the reason why I had that highlighted. Um, but at, like, like I said, this was just the definition part right here. So we could take just that out completely. And so I just need an answer on that one. So we have councilwoman Whitehorse and then council or uh, chairman um, Watkins. Um, I, I did talk to Austin about this earlier, and he did talk to the election commission, and it should just be say the election commission after the buy. Did you get that, Rian? Yeah. And and then later on, where it talks about the election right. commission doing their background checks. Yeah. Since, since they are appointed as employees, um, human resources can do their background checks. Okay. Okay, that takes Thank you, care Councilman. of that. Um, I don't recall why we why I have this one highlighted on the conflict of interest. It says shall mean a direct conflict between a public official's duty and his her personal interests. And I don't recall why that's highlighted. If maybe somebody else does, I don't remember. Is that a general definition of conflict of interest, Ryan? Or yes, yes. Anybody and on? If the everybody remember. I, I think no part of that discussion was um, having family members running or being in the elections that the commission is running. So that would be considered a conflict of interest, but I think that could come up under nepotism or whatever. Okay. And that would come under personal interest too, I think. So we could just take that out. All right, and then the next one was on the drug testing. Um, shall mean a test which utilizes hair or other tissues or fluids of the human body to determine the presence or absence of drugs in a person's system. A urinalysis does not qualify as a bona fide drug test for purposes of this election code. And that's in conflict with what is required for the districts, I think, too. So I think this was one of the points of discussion. Thank you, Rianne. Yes, Councilman Steele. Well, I think we referred that question to the council because um, if I recall, you know, the districts are only required to do a year analysis, but um, the discussion had to do with uh, the, the t I'm pretty sure it had some about saliva and what not tissues other tissues and i know at the time our um our drug testing lab was 
wasn't able to do the, the saliva ones. And if you look at the saliva ones, those only go back as far as 24 hours. And yet you're allowing a, a saliva test, but not a urinalysis test, which goes back 30 days. And then you're, you're also requesting a, a hair follicle, which goes could go back six months. So, I mean, it's just, it's out of whack there. I mean, we, we either need to say one or the other. You know, a year analysis test or a, a hair follicle test, because we're not capable of doing the the saliva test. So I, I know that that was part of the discussion also. Okay, thank you for clarification. So, so maybe we could just take out this this last sentence because this again we're under definitions. So it's a test which utilizes hair or other tissues or fluids of the human body to determine the presence or absence of drugs in a person's system. So we could just take out the last sentence. A urinalysis does not qualify as a bona fide drug test for purposes of this election code. That's up to you guys if you want to do that. Madam Vice Chair. Yes. Um, or else we could add this to the, uh, after the election code comma, for positions of president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, fifth member, and council persons. You know what I mean? A urinalysis does not qualify as a bona fide drug test for purposes of this election code for positions of vice president, president, secretary, treasurer, fifth member, and council persons. And include the election commission in that as well too? Yes, so, we either, I'm either wondering if that's. What? I'm wondering if that can be addressed further down, where <clears throat> it's. I'm trying to look for it. I can't remember. Uh, background checks and drug testing. We can probably clarify it there, because, like I said, this part up here is just the definitions. So, just to. Take, we could take that and put it down below where it addresses what drug tests the candidates and the officers need to take and what the district uh, organizations need to take. So we have Councilwoman Spotted Bear and then Councilman Steele. I was going to um, agree with Attorney. With the attorney. Um, but if you go to page 20, I like the idea of um, Attorney Red Owl uh, going more into detail there with that, um, with having the president, vice president, secretary, fifth member, council representatives, and election commission included in that. Thank you, Councilman Spotterbear. Councilman Steele. Right. Um, I think Rayanne is right. Also, I, I don't think we should get too detailed in the definition because that could affect each column that it, it describes a drug test. But I, I think um, in this election code where it says shall mean a test which utilizes, I think we either just stick with hair or if we're not going to do hair, then um, your analysis. And then that pretty much that describes what type of the definition for a drug test and then leave all that other stuff out because then you're not making it complicated in other sections of the code. Thank you, Councilman. Rand, do you agree or do you think the um, other tissues and fluids of the human body need to stay in that definition? Yes. All I'm saying for the definition part is to just remove that last sentence and put it down below somewhere where that where it addresses um, on page 20 where it addresses uh, drug testing okay does that work for us council okay we'll get more details in the actual on page 20 as noted okay right so i'm going to take that out and take the highlight off Mm -hmm. 
Okay, and then the next item was on um, section five, election dates, uh, subsection B, primary election. The primary election shall be held on the first Tuesday of October, 2020, and every two years thereafter on the second Tuesday, uh, should say first Tuesday of October. So it will always be the first Tuesday. Is that correct, Rand? Yes. So do we need that every two years thereafter then piece in there? I think she's gonna have to put 2022 on there too. Thank you, Councilman. Sure. Councilman Steele? You know, this is a code. It's a law. I don't think we have to be specific with dates. So that way we don't have to change it every two years. I think if we just stick to the first primary election shall be held on the first Tuesday of October of every election year, that that's the language that should be in there. Instead of adding a year every two years, then we have to amend this code. Sounds good. And Rianne, is that the intent? Because that every two years thereafter of the second is kind of confusing. So is it the intent of this, uh, the primary election to always be the first Tuesday of October? That was my understanding. Okay. We can simplify that. Does that okay. make, first that Tuesday of October, every election. Mm. Oops. Oh, get it here. All right, and then some uh, on the subsection six, uh, I mean, section six voting, subsection A, all voting in tribal primary general or special elections shall be conducted by secret ballot. Polling sites shall be open between 8 a.m. MST and 8 p.m. MST on the respective days designated by the council for the elections. And I, I don't know if everybody, if, is everybody okay with that change? And I believe that was done just because um, it didn't seem like there was much activity going on or much people out to vote around 7 a.m. between seven and eight. So they thought 8 a.m. would be better. So it's just still the same amount of time. It's just pushed back an hour. Yeah. Seeing no comments. I have a, I have a, I have a comment. Uh, sure. If we could go back to 5C, I think we need to change the, take the year out of there. Oh, okay. The general election beginning. General election shall be held on the same day in November as the national election every two years thereafter. Yeah. Or just take out every two years thereafter. Well, I guess maybe, don't they have uh, midterms though nationally? Is that in November? But they're every two years also. Are they? Okay. Yeah. Well. So, so do you think I should take this out? Sure. Okay. So just to clarify for council that um, C general election will be changed to the general election shall be held on the same day in November as the national election period. Thank you, Russ. So are there any um, objections to moving the time back an hour? It's still the same amount of time, uh, which is on the section six voting a secret ballot. Uh, Councilman Spotterbear. I don't think there's any issue with that. Also, I wanna remind folks that usually the president will give two hours for uh, tribal workers to go and vote anyway. Yep, that is in our 
policies, so it's staggered. All right, so it doesn't look like there's anything else for that one, Ryan. Okay, and then in the same section of voting, subsection B, electioneering prohibited, there shall be no electioneering within 400 feet. That's the change from 200 feet of any polling sites and or voting booths. So that's the only change there is they increased the, the footage of how close people can be to an election site or polling site. I see no objections here, Rand, to that. Okay. Uh, then that, that was just a typo in C, so I fixed that. And then, um, okay, so um, under section eight, election commission, uh, qualifications under subsection A, qualifications to serve on election commission, that remains the same. There was a suggestion to change the age from at least 35 to 30 years old and there was no decision made on that so councilman Steele. yeah um you know I, I was in favor of moving it down to 30 just like the requirement to run for council and i know um we we don't get a lot of people interested but we do have a lot of young people that are you know educated and and well versed in in writing and reading and so I, I think um, I think it'll be in the best interest of the tribe to lower that age to 30. I know it used to be 25 years old, but when the tribe moved their age requirement to run for council to 30, we moved this to 35. But I, I think it, I think, um, and this is me personally. You know, we have a lot of young people out there that are just as qualified. So I'm I'm hoping that we could move that requirement down to 30 years old. Um, same age as running for council. Councilman Spotterbear. I It doesn't say what the age was prior to that. It, it was 35 and they want to keep it 35. I agree that, that um, if we can move it to 30 along with the requirements for um, the nominees, there are young indiv individuals out there with uh, very good um, skills to to plan prepare and ensure that you know things are are done and done in a timely manner i can support h30 as well do we have any objections to moving it down to 30. hearing or seeing none no objections to moving the age down to 30. I think we can move it down to 30. Does that work? All right. Thank you, Ryan. Okay. <clears throat> the next change comes under the same uh, section for the election commission, uh, subsection B, procedure for applying for a position on the commission, letter of intent required. All applicants for a position on the commission shall file a letter of intent with the tribal secretary stating that they are applying for membership on the commission. The letter of intent shall be filed with the tribal secretary no later than um, it's changed from 180 days to calendar days to 100. Oh no, it's changed from uh, 180 to just 30 calendar days or one month prior to expiration of the term of office of the commissioner's positions to be filled. Any, any thoughts or objections on that? Councilman Spotterbear. Is that enough time to receive the background check and the drug testing to be reviewed? That's a great question. Um, I'm gonna go to Councilman Puyer and then we can come back to that one. I, I don't even think that one was discussed. And I, I thought that we were uh, going to, how do we know? Is it from the adoption of the appointment or what is the, up to that 30 days? Is it? 30 days prior to taking out petitions or 
what are we talking about in this? Um, Cause I know we changed something till May, what, May 30th, May 30th to get your counts in and stuff like that. Councilman Steele. So how this has supposed to be, I mean, to, to be normal was that it should have been a term, the term should have started in May of every election year, but it's not like that. The tribe approves them late July and then we have to inochni into the election. But if we've really followed this code, then their terms expire in May, which, which means you advertise at least a month earlier to get them in place to start the process. But the way it was written was six months six months prior to the expiration of the term in office, which was, I think, what, what was it, Cora, November or December? November. Yeah, so that's, so we just shortened that time, which, so the way it was written was last November or last December, they should have put their applications in for a commissioner, which it don't make sense. So all we did was shorten that term down for one month. But, um, but Davey is talking about it, it, it has to do with the term of the election commissioners, which should start in May, according to this election code, but it, it never did. They always got in in July. So what we're saying here is before their term expires in May, that process should start at least 30 days before, because it, there's only three of them and it don't take long to get their, um, their drug test results and their background checks back for three individuals, R5, before we move forward. So that's enough time. So the secretary has something to add as well. Um, so based on that information, I do have a question because I did receive a um, some action from the Law and Order Committee secretary. And uh, usually when they have me advertise, then I'll get that information from the committee secretary. She forwarded me an advertisement and it was a notice for um, the commission and the deadline date was is July 22nd. And so she told me that the committee wanted them done before then so that the selection can happen during the July regular session. And that's what they were gonna be putting on the agenda. So it is being currently advertised in the papers with the deadline of July 22nd. Chairman. Now, yeah, Stacy, that was true. You, you guys, as a committee, made that motion. So that's why I had the secretary get it out there. So yes, it was a committee that made that motion. Councilman Steele. Uh, we did make that motion, but I don't, I don't think it was that late. We wanted them in place sooner. Like, I think we, we were talking June, if I'm correct, because July would be way too late. I guess also was in consideration the special election that they were going to be con um, conducting, the referendum for the um, 638. So I, I believe that was based on, a part of that was based on that date too. That makes sense. Councilman Whitehorse. We, we did take that action to to <clears throat> advertise and um, do the selection in the July meeting because that would give her time to get the letters back and do the background checks. So are we going to stick with this 30 days? Question or comment? And actually in the code it doesn't say when the term ends or begins it just says a term of two years so the secretary has one more question then we have councilwoman little hawk weston okay so based on that with a, a background needing to be um conducted and if you wanted it during july um I think the 22nd is a little bit close because that's a Friday and then your agenda or your um, regular meeting is the 26th. And so I was wondering if you could push it back to like July 8th or, you know, around that time so there'd be enough time to do those background checks. 
and that way you'd have a solid list of candidates by your July meeting. Councilwoman Little Hawk Weston. Thank you, Madam Vice Chair. I guess I'm just gonna ditto everyone's comments, Mr. Our Chair of the Law and Order Committee and Cora. Um, we did do exactly that uh, to advertise and I did see it in the paper last night. I was reading it and I guess I needed, just gonna ask the Secretary Stacy, have you received uh, any letters of intent? Yes, I have. Are you receiving, you, so you have been receiving them then? Yes. Oh, okay, all right. That's all I was gonna say, thank you. Councilman Steele. Well, um, let's, let's not worry about this year because we're already rolling. Um, stay focused on the code, but I, I think 30 days would be fine. When you're talking about expiration of the term of the, the commissioners, just keep in mind relatives, um, July, whatever that is we're saying, that's just a few months or a few weeks before you're supposed to have taken out petitions for office. So that's only going to give them a short week or two to, to come up with a time frame. And that's a gamble again. So are we okay with changing the election code to one month for procedure for applying for a position of commission letter of intent required? Chairman? That's what they voted on. Ryan, um, any thoughts on this one? No, I think um, it's going to be tight, but I think that, um, you know, you guys are all more experienced in how these elections go anyway. So if you feel like 30 days is enough time for the letter of intent with their documentation to be submitted prior to the expiration of a term. And I think that's the, the, the part that needs to be clarified is when's the expiration of a term. And it sounds like it's, I don't know if it's May or July. I, that's what's not clear to me. But if, if, it, if, you, if this can be processed, you know, then I, I don't see any problem with it. We have Councilman Steele and Councilman Puyer. Ryan, can we add a section which identifies the expiration of term? So we don't have to do it year after year. It could just be in a code that this is when their term expires. Yeah. I would say June. June would be a good month because that's two months before the um, the when the petitions supposedly go out and that'll give enough, give enough time to come up with budgets and a time frame for an election. So I think we should add a section in there that allows for expiration of term. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman. What was the, oh. What was the month? You said June. Or June, so then um, if this was the 30 day and we, we adopted this, then it would be May that they would have to get their letter of intent in, correct? And that's passed for now. Y'all can someone for since we missed the May deadline and we work on it for next two years, if we have the May deadline to do the, if whoever makes the selection in May of 24, then them people can take office July 1. Because the, the way I understand it, the 30 day advertisement in May, you wouldn't make the selection till the end of May of 24, and then they could start off in July of 24, that next election commission for that one. Because we missed it, we missed it this year, this election, but trying, work, trying to work through 
this election is, I think, where we're hung, a little bit hung up on. Although we are going to be pressed for time now, wh whoever, whoever sets the, the dates are set for the election, but the, to get the ball rolling, I guess, is, is the problem. But we can keep the present temporary commission in until, like Stacy said, but Law and Order would have to go back to change the advertisement date, and then the next bunch wouldn't take place till after the selection by the council of the next commission for this one. Yeah, since Law and Order already made action to advertise and stuff, can we take this out of this election code for this time? So that we're, you know what I mean? Because we're not going to make it. You're right. We're not going to make it for this one. But we've already have action to advertise and all those things. And we know we have the special election coming up. So can we take off this part from this election code? You know, this is a, a this is a code. This ain't something that gets um, done year after year. So the way it was written is the way we follow. My understanding is this process already started. So this code would probably have to be utilized, you know, if not for this term, then for the next. Because they're right, the, the, the process already, the wills already begin. So we should have done this a long time ago, but I, I think whatever's in place now is the process because we already did put out the advertisements for this this commission. So how do we change something when the process already started? So, I mean, oh, go ahead, Brian. Are you saying to have the term from July to July? Every two years? No, the I, expiration? I just said that the next the next set of commissioners would start July 1 because this process has already started the May advertisements. We, we won't see May of 22 ever again unless we live that long. But so this time frame has already started. But if we're amending it and the time frame has already started, we're, but but if one, once we adopt this, this is what's going to supersede and repeal all the others, right? Yep. So do we do we need that? Do we need the time in here though? The time frame, the one month, because because we probably will revise it by next election too, right? I mean, we did it last. I remember listening last term too. Um, it is a code. I understand that, but you know, once once we adopt this, this is what we're following. Any thoughts on that, Rayanne, uh, about the time have, having it in here right now? Letter of intent shall be filled later than 30 calendar days prior to expiration of the term of office. Um, I'm drawing a blank. If Russ, do you have anything? days six months prior to expiration so I, I, i'm sorry i i was just I, I was talking to someone there for a minute so i missed the conversation what was okay it? so um I, while it goes back to um identifying what the what the expiration of a term of the of a term is when oh. would that be oh. and currently what? we're already past the may part of that typically happens so now we're looking at um june and then july before selection right well you you know what the the the, the ordinance says you know before it's changed the, the old one and anyway, 20 whatever it is it says the commissioners and alternate commissioners shall serve for a period of two years or during the term of office of the appointing council that's the way it currently reads Councilman Whitehorse. There is no month. There is no month in the ordinance. It, it just says that it's it's on page eleven. There's okay. The term, term the, the commissioners and alternate commissioners. 
Brianne, one second. We have Councilwoman Lighthorse. She has the floor. Sorry. A background check takes. Let me find it. 24 hours for state and tribal and F. I mean, state and FBI scans. That's the fingerprint. Uh, the tribal court takes 10 days, but if you put in a request for to expedite that to Betty, she, she could have it done within a week. And a drug test takes a day if it's clean. If they don't have to send it out to the lab. So if we keep those in consideration, we could keep this as is. We could add a date for May or a month for May to start the next term, not this term. And we could set a special council meeting for the a week after they're due, whenever that is. Otherwise, we're going to sit here and argue about this for the rest of the day which is almost over already. So if you look at the term of office of commissioners, the commissioners and alternate commissioners shall serve for a period of two years, unexpired unless fulfilling a term. And then that just leaves it open to, puts the responsibility on somebody to make sure they're tracking those terms and when, when to at start advertising for those letters of intent. So it leaves it open. And then you're not, so then you're not tied down to months or we know it's two years. So whoever's going to be kind of have having a, being the watchdog for this, um, they need to get those advertisements out prior to, um, I would say at least a couple months before the expiration of the term. That way they have time to submit their letters of intent. So moving on. Okay. Um, so then the next one, where are we? Chair, I have a question. Yeah, Council McClure. Whoever made these copies, can, do they make them, your prints any bigger or what's, is this a government printout or what's the deal? You know, I just said that. <laughs> Bifocals. Okay, so the next change was uh, subsection C, appointment of election commission slash alternates by the tribal council. And the change made there was a, a, the, uh, the time period too. So all letters of intent and supporting documentation. Oh, that's the one we just read, right? One month. Oh no, that's the same. Okay, so once the letters of intent and supporting documentation is submitted, shall be presented to tribal council by the tribal secretary no later than 30 calendar days or one month prior to expiration of the term of office of the positions to be filled. The council shall review all letters of intent and make the initial determination of which candidates meet the qualifications under subsection 8A. Once review is complete and a list of eligible candidates has been made, the council shall appoint the election commissioners and the alternate election commissioners from the list of eligible candidates by a majority vote of council representatives present. So that just changes it, that matches up with the previous provision. So that's like immediately you guys have to review it. I 
I don't know. That's that's pretty tight. That's like the same time. Any discussion or thoughts on that, Council? Well, <laughs> Councilwoman Little Hawk Weston. No, I just forgot to put my hand down. Okay, thank you. Councilwoman Swadberg. Chair, I think we should earmark that and move on to the next one until we come to a solid resolution. Sounds good. Rand, we'll move on to the I'm next gonna, one. Earmark that okay. one. Contents of letter of intent. The letter of intent must include name, address, and date of birth of the applicant. The, the only change there was taking out age and putting date of birth. Sounds good. And then they took out uh, subsection uh, six completely. The writing sample demonstrating critical thinking skills, the submission of that, um, they took that out. Councilman Swadber. Is, is that for just the election commission or is that for all candidates? Just the election commission. Okay. Any, any, anything, any response on that one? Keep going. Keep going. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, they take out under G, filling vacancies on the commission. Um, they take out the OST executive committee shall fill all vacancies on the commission as necessary from the list of alternate commissioners who were selected by the tribal council. And in place of that, put a vacancy shall be automatically filled with the next alternate upon notification by the OST secretary within five working days from the date of vacancy. Looks good. Everybody, everybody okay? Okay. All right. And then, then the next one, compensation of commission. Could I make a comment on that? Yes. The, the comment I would have is that when alternates are selected, uh, I think we need to say number one alternate, two and three, or whatever they might be, so there won't be any confusion on which alternate is going to step in for a vacancy. I see a head shaking by Councilman Puyer, Councilwoman Spadaber. I agree. I mean, it's it's known that the next highest vote getter gets it, but if we have to have it written out, then it's I think I don't think that's an issue to add in it now. Thanks for the suggestion, Russ. I think um, the council is saying yes, they want to specify that. Okay, so I added uh, the next highest vote alternate. Sounds good, Ryan. Okay, then the next provision is compensation of commissioners under H. Um, so commissioners shall be compensated at the rate of $150 per day, which shall consist of a 24 hour period during the election process. The commissioners shall be paid through the OST payroll system with all tribal, federal and other taxes deducted. The commissioner's rate of pay may be at an adjusted rate once all tribal and district election processes are completed. Commissioner compensation shall be included in the annual tribal budget as provided in sections 29 and 30. To justify their compensation, each commissioner shall keep a daily log of their activities. Each commissioner shall submit copies of their daily logs to the commissioner commission's office manager or secretary at the end of the work week. The office manager or secretary shall verify the logs by signing off on them and then submitting them along with and they take out pay requests and put a timesheet. Uh, and this is to be submitted. Uh, they took out tribal treasurer uh, and FAO and, and in place put OST payroll office and added on election days, commissioners shall be compensated at $200 per day for the primary and general elections. 
Council Member Puyo? No. I, I just, one, one thing, does it address, uh, we didn't come to it yet, but uh, judges and tellers should uh, reflect that $200 too. Yeah, that's in there. It's in there. We'll come to that. Is everybody okay with this one? Yep. Okay. And then the, okay. And then the term of office of commissioners, we just read the commissioners and alternate commissioners shall serve for a period of two years unexpired unless fulfilling a term. Are we going to put a month in there? Councilman Puyo? Yeah, I would, rec I would, my recommendation from the appointment date. From, okay. That way it don't, it don't say a day, it don't say a month either. Because if you can appoint them in May, June, or July, I mean. I, I think with, in our discussion with the election commission previously, May, May was the, the month because then it, it fits within the timeline for changes, so I, I think we should add May previous in the election year that the term expires. 31? 31? May 31? Yeah. Rand, did you get that um, change? Okay. okay. Unexpired, wait, now let me read this. Commissioners and alternate commissioners shall serve for a period of two years, unexpired, Starting from May 1st? No, I think it ends May 31st. Is that oh. correct? So starting June, well, it'll take a month after to assign them, seat them. I mean, that one month. May well, they they 31st. should be appointed at the May regular meeting and then start, I guess, June 1st. So their term would expire May 31st. Got it. Thank you. Uh, what was that? May 31st? June 31st? I missed that part. May 31st. Okay. It expires on May 31st, so the newly appointed would start on June 1st. And do we need to put in there that they be appointed at the regular May meeting? I hear yes from Councilman Puyer. Yeah, that, that would be like that would keep us on track too, right? Yeah. Like, okay. Is that okay? So a new sentence, newly appointed will start June 1st and June 1 and appointed at the regular May Tribal Council meeting. So the commissioners and alternate commissioners shall serve for a period of two years, unexpired term ending May 31st, unless fulfilling a term. Newly appointed will start June 1 and appointed at the regular May Tribal Council meeting. Is that good? I don't, I, I don't think you need unexpired term because that makes it sound weird. So if you have the commissioners and alternate commissioners shall, shall serve for a- Oh, I, I think I should put that fulfilling, unless fulfilling an unexpired term. Okay, that, that yeah. Okay, previous, there you go. I, it sounded weird too. Okay. And that should be in. Councilman Yellowboy? No. I think maybe just take that out. So we have a question by Councilman Yellowboy. Thank you, Madam Vice. Are we putting any requirements in these um, commissioner positions such as must not be related, closely related? Like that. They're in there already. These are, we're just going through what's been changed. 
Okay, so it says in there that the commissioner is can be related to a candidate, Jonathan. Because yeah. that that would pose a conflict of interest, just like we faced last <laughs> last election. Ray, do you have the specific place where it notes that for the election commissioners? Okay. First, let me let you know that I added some language here on the term. So term ending May 31st, unless fulfilling an unexpired term, then then I should put in that case for the remainder of the term. That way there's clear, clear clarity there in case there's a fulfilling in midterm. Um, Let's see, look back. Uh, Councilman, to let me know that it's on page nine, uh, Councilman Yellowboy. Okay, yeah. So qualifications to serve on election commission, the, the only change that we made to this was the age, uh, which was decreased to 30. So they have to be enrolled members, um, must be at least 30 must be a person of good moral character, must not be a candidate for any elected office, must not be a current employee of the tribe or a board member of any tribal entity or tribally chartered organization. If, select, if selected, must resign from being a current employee of the tribe or a board member of any tribal entity or tribally chartered organization within five days of his or her appointment, must not have a conflict of interest as defined in section four, must not have any felony, felony convictions or any offenses that fall under the definition of a dishonest act under tribal ordinance number 99-16, must submit to complete and pass a drug test, must not have a misdemeanor conviction within one year of applying for this position, and must possess strong reading and writing skills with knowledge and understanding of the tribal constitution and the election code. So those are the qualifications. Councilman Yellowboy, did you hear those qualifications? Yeah, I, I just trying to make sure that we don't have a, a conflict of interest between candidate and the commissioner. And so we avoid the issue we ran into last election. Um, that was good, thank you. So we have Councilwoman Spotted Bear, Councilwoman Sears, is that correct? Yeah. And then Councilman Steele and then Councilman Dillon. Thank you, Madam Vice. Uh, Rayanne, yeah. can we go back to section I? Just because that last sentence was bothering me in regards to and, can we change that after May regular council session? Okay. Which one? Newly appointed will start June 1 and appointed at the regular May can tribal council meeting? The and after June 1 to after appointed at the regular May tribal council meeting. Okay. Newly appointed will start June 1 after appointed at the regular May tribal council meeting. Thank you. Thank okay. you. So we have Councilwoman Sears, uh, Councilman Steele and Councilman Dillon. Yes, um, my question I, is on the terms of the office of the um the years the two-year term is that um so when when we do select the commissioners they're gonna serve for two years um even though there's not an election in between or how is that gonna work councilman whitehorse um the, the way it's supposed to work jackie is that they they serve on the board but they don't come back until necessary. They're supposed to make a final report of changes that they think need to be in the code and then come back when we have a special or, or yeah, when we have a special. Because I think we should have some language in there to state that when it ends, when they do their final report and December 31st will be their final day unless there's an election coming up they'll be called back in you know we need to put the language in there and uh because of the fact they're gonna you know 
like before the the commissioner was saying well we were put in here for two years and we're staying you know and we had no say because the, the it was in the code but now we're saying that we're going to keep them on so they can work on this code but here we are as council we're doing the code so we got to either define if it's the commission doing the code or is it council that's that's where i'm why i'm asking this councilman whitehorse i, I agree with that jackie i think we do need to put um a date or a deadline in there for their final report and suggestions for changes to the code. I, I think though it needs to be at least 30 days when, from when the election is certified or when any 30 days from if any litigation is done or anything filed in court is completed. So I don't know if you say December 31st or January 31st. Well, if, if there's any litigation, then I think that we should just, um, we should just have a date like December 31st and it's all the reports done, the counting's all done. We, we uh, approve their election. And then the language saying they call they can be called back in due to litigation at the request you know at the um okay or something from the law and order committee or council or xb you know something like that but we need to put language in there so we're not trying to decide if we're keeping them in and when do they end because we always go through this we always go through this and you know what are they doing in that whole period of time if they're not, there's no election or anything going on. Okay, so maybe Rayanne, if we could add another paragraph in the term of Office of Commissioners that, that um, commissioners shall actively serve from June 1st until December 31st or January 31st, whichever the council wants, and shall be inactive unless called back to duty until their term expires. I'll agree with that, uh, July 31st. June 1st to January 31st? <laughs> I'm sorry, January, sorry. Okay, say, say that again, the commissioner shall... I forgot. Just, just only be active shall serve as an active um, committee from June 1st until January 31st and shall be inactive unless called back to duty by the tribal council for special elections or referendums. The only problem that I have with that is that we require them to not have a job. I think, Cora, on that part, we can we can um, allow them during the time, you know, during their time off to work if they so choose. I could see that, but depending on what their job is, what job they get, would it create a um, conflict of interest? Councilman Puyo? You know, in a way, the way the old one is written, it's like they're supposed to be year round anyway, because it says they're supposed to uh, update the elect, um, voting list every six months. So 
if they don't, if there's nobody working, who's going to update it? So do we want to keep the inactive piece in there or not? Councilman Steele, did you have a comment on that? Well, on that, I mean, you know, that's our job as the legislators to, to make sure our, our codes are up to par. And that's why I kept stressing to law and order that this is something we needed to do a year ago. Um, so that's, that's the responsibility of the, the legislators to make sure that these codes are up kept. Um, but I, I do have another question that I don't feel that was answered. Um, when we were having our d debate and our discussion in law and order and it was supposed to have brought here for either to add something or not, and that was because of the situation that happened last year in the election was that you had a mother that was on the commission and a, a candidate. And it was questionable with the count of the, the, the ballots. And so we didn't want that to happen again. So we didn't, some of us wanted to include in the code where it was a conflict if, if you were a commissioner and you had a, you know, a close relative running because we don't know who, who has control of those ballots once they're in that, that, that location. And so we wanted something in the code and then some were like, well, this can happen and this can happen, but that discussion was supposed to be held today. And I think um, Rayanne read the requirements, but never brought that up. And I, I, I remember I told Rayanne to bring that up. So I think that's an answer we, we wanted. So do we want to add explicit? Is, what well, it's, it's up to the council here. If, if they think that's not an issue, then it's not an issue. But if, if it is, I think we should protect the tribe at all costs. I mean, how does that look to the general public out there, you know, that, you know, sitting council reps or, or people that are candidates have someone close yeah. in, in the commission. And, and it showed last election when a candidate received an extra 100 votes when it came to um, challenge votes, which was crazy. Councilman Carlo. Thank you, Madam Chair. Our vice chair, <clears throat> you know, um, we, we don't know who our election commission is going to be. Currently, we, we're, we're still taking letters of intent and we don't know who, who will be selected. But if we're going to put that kind of language in there, then, I mean, I don't know who will be selected but maybe one of their relatives or their sons decided to run or, and then we're limiting, we're limiting individuals. And I just think that, you know, um, there's a lot of people that have um, good character and integrity and are ethical. I know there were questions with the last group, but I think we need to be able to give those commissioners a chance um, and let's see what happens. I mean, I don't want what happened last last election to happen again, but like I'm saying, we don't know who those commissioners are going to be right now. We don't even know how many letters of intent Stacy has received, and I don't want to know now until you know, the time comes to select those individuals. But again, we're all related. So, you know, I, I just don't agree with putting that kind of language in there. That's just my opinion. Councilman Steele? Yeah, so we, we never know who's running or we don't know who's running for office. We don't know who the commissioners are, but the laws are supposed to be enacted to, to make safeguards so that that don't take place because 10 years from now, we don't know who's gonna be running. We don't know who the commissioners are gonna be, but we know that there'll be these safeguards in place. So that's the whole purpose of creating these laws. And that's all we're saying in order to protect the integrity. I mean, how much people go out and vote really knowing because they, they, they say these things and you know, 
those numbers when they when they pop out like that it you know the people ain't lying you know they, they question that stuff and so to, to to protect the integrity of the elections and the tribe we need to make sure we have all of these in place and it ain't intended for anybody either on this council now or the commission it's 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 just a learning something that we learned from in the past that we don't want to happen again because it does like I say, protect the integrity of the tribe. So we have Councilman Puyer and then Councilwoman Carlo. Okay, I thought Councilman Dillon was ahead of a few people. Oh, yes. So we, we've jumped, so we've gotten a couple conversations going for sure. Is this in relation to that though? Because I do want us to wrap up a couple of them. We have a couple still open conversations. So um, Councilman Dillon, is yours in re respect to it has to do with the code. Okay. You know, I sat here for so long, I, I don't even know where we're at. But, you know, conflict of interest, Tyler was talking about that. And I have ran a number of occasions, I think people know that. And my sister is set on the election committee. And during that process, I have never used her. If she was the only one there, I wouldn't even go in there. I always use the other commissioners and I think as individuals, we can do that. So I don't think there's a conflict there. And I think with, uh, we should learn from our last, what happened last election. And to be honest with each other and to have our people there who are open and willing to work with everybody. That's my concern. And, and but there is ethics if people are ethical and, and we can trust tribal members to do the right thing, I believe. And if, if your sister or brother sitting in there or, or your aunt or uncle, the only one there, then don't use them. Wait until somebody else comes. These things can happen if people do it right. And one thing about it, we, we should have learned, this council should have learned from the last election. Well, there's a lot of things that could go wrong and did go wrong. And so I, I, I applaud the effort of changing this. This is good, thank you. Thank you, Councilman Dillon. Councilman Puyer, did you have anything? Yes, I agree. When we put relatives on her, they, we're limiting the field. If we, if we select a commissioner, then you might be eliminating somebody that even runs for council because the commissioner comes in first. But I'm like, Mr. Dillon, we have to start trusting our people someplace on ethics. You talk about ethics, then Sure, them people, if there's a commission, you got a relative that's a candidate, all they gotta do is step aside and don't count that district that they're involved in. I mean, little, and I, and I know our, we're putting people in there supposedly over 30 years old, I guess now the way it goes. And if they don't have that type of ethics, then they don't really, they don't deserve to be on the, the commission either. Councilman Carlo. You know, <clears throat> I'm going to use my colleague here, Mr. Dreamer. George comes from a huge, huge family. I mean, we're talking a big family. So is that going to limit Mr. Dreamer if one of his relatives should get in there? And I do. I, I'm like you guys. I believe we have people who have ethics, high moral standards, and... and um, we got to have faith in, we got to have the faith in our people. We really do. Um, you know, we got to give them a chance. And like Craig said, you know, I remember years ago as a, as a young person when my mother ran and there was Denzel and um, I can't remember who all was on there, but, you know, um, I know Denzel had a lot of relatives as well too, but there was never any kind of issues. I mean, those were, those were good, honest people. And um, I think we just, we need to give our people that chance, you know, and if something comes up, then, you know, I don't know, I guess we, we deal with it or whoever, maybe the council deals with it. But, you know, I, I, I do, I have a lot of faith in our people and I think they can, we can work around it. Thank you. So we have Councilwoman Spotterbear and Councilman Steele. Thank you, uh, Madam Vice. Um, so in regards to Davy's comment and saying that now we're allowing people over 30 
and we don't know their ethics. I think ethics come at any age and how you were raised with your morals and your ethics and how you carry them. So we shouldn't use that against anybody who is younger or older or assume that because you are older, you have more ethics. That's an individual uh, matter. And in regards to relations, there, I mean, we, it sounds cliche, but I mean, that's what we say, but a lot, there are relations everywhere and it's a matter of how someone holds themselves and that they don't let it interfere uh, because we've all been rattled with family members demanding or wanting something from us because of our positions and we having to take a hard stance against that. So that's an individual responsibility and personal choice, in my opinion. Councilman Steele. You know, that's not always the case though, guys. We seen it last year. It wasn't always the case. And, and what if, you know, that, that took out either the two reps from Porcupine because of a relationship. And that's all we're saying here. That's not always the case. You know, if we're talking about trusting and believing our people and we sit here and we, um, we make all these requirements so nobody can run. That's why we're so limited in, in all these districts. We put all these requirements in this, in this election code. You know, the constitution only says to be a member of the tribe, live on a reservation, 30 years of age. Those are the only requirements to run for council. You know, if we have faith and trust in our people, then take everything else. Let everyone run for council. Seems like we put all these limitations so our chances are better to get back in. But I, I, I you know, if we, we're talking true democracy and allow our people to run and take all these requirements out and let everyone run for office because there are some people, like you said, give them a chance that could probably come back and do a better job or, you know, that, that changed their life around in, in 10, 10, 20 years. But because of their, their history, we don't allow it. But the Constitution allows it. So if we're, we're going to talk about that, and, you know, let's open it up and allow everybody to run for council. I have a question. Um, do we have anything? In, I know we talked about counting and those votes. Do we have anything in here about using a, a automated teller or anything to count the votes? Because that was also something that happened last time, which could make it more. Uh, Madam Chair. We're, we're bouncing all over and I would like to just go through it um, and, and address things as we come to them. Um, and I just wanted to say that this uh, last paragraph that I an added under the term of office of commissioners, just for clarity, um, I changed a few of the words. And um, so it states the commissioner shall actively serve from June 1 to January 31 and be inactive without pay unless called back to duty by tribal council and shall be allowed to work in a job other than the election commission, as long as it does not create a conflict of interest as a commissioner. Um, so does that work for people or no? Yes, I think so. Council Woman Sears, that works for you? That was your suggestion and then we had input Does that work for everybody i'm not hearing any any objections so yep but i do want um you know councilman still did bring that up you know and he said it still wasn't addressed so you good with it now okay all right so just wanted to clear clarify that i know there's a couple open things so he said it's okay to move forward with that so Okay, um, so the other changes were made, office hours of commission. Commission office hours shall be during normal tribal working days from 8 o'clock a.m. to 4.30 p.m., Monday through Friday and on weekends when required. Uh, and then the other change was on tribal primary, general, and special election days, including any district elections that the commission conducts, office hours shall be from 7 a.m. until all the ballot boxes are delivered and all ballots are accounted for and secured at the commission office. 
the commission shall be allowed to rent a post office box at the Kyle post office where it used to say Pine Ridge. They crossed that out and put Kyle to ensure that all background checks, absentee ballots, and other election office correspondence is delivered in a timely manner to the election commission. Any comment on that change? Councilman Puyer. I just have one question. So are they, is the commission permanently moved to Kyle? I mean, the reason I ask, if it goes back to Pine Ridge, then maybe we should just leave that Kyle or Pine Ridge, just say the commission may be eligible to get their own uh, box or something like that, in case they move back to Pine Ridge or Wombly or someplace. So no location on the post office box, just they can get one. Okay. Uh, okay, so just take that out. So they, the commission shall be allowed to rent a post office box to ensure that all background checks, absentee ballots, and other election office correspondence is delivered in a timely manner to the election commission. That work? Looks good. Okay. Um, candidates, this is the uh, background checks and drug testing. Candidates for the position of election commissioner shall be subject to the same drug test and back criminal background checks as candidates for tribal office are required to perform. All such drug tests and background checks must be completed prior to submitting the applicant's packet to the Tribal Council for review. All applicants for commissioners shall be solely responsible for the payment of any costs or fees associated with obtaining their drug tests and tribal state federal criminal background checks. The criminal background checks that must be performed are as follows. Tribal, state, and federal. <clears throat> The criminal background checks for all candidates for positions on the election commission will be performed. Okay, so that's the part. Uh, will be performed by the Oglala Sioux Human Resources Department. Does that stay the same then? Yeah, I believe so, right? Councilman Whitehorse, we identified that earlier. Yep. Yeah, okay, so take that out. And then um, all drug tests and criminal background results of Prospective election commissioners must be returned to the OST secretary. Once the results of the tests are returned, the following protocol shall be strictly adhered to. Uh, and then there was just a question on number one, the results shall be forwarded directly from the recipient at the OST human resources and the drug testing facility to the OST secretary in a sealed envelope, which bears the name. So, um, that I just was highlighted just to make sure that it was consistent. And uh, so I will take that highlight out um, here. And it's not taken out for some reason. Mm -hmm. oh, shoot. Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna have to come back to that one and fix it. Uh, I try one more time. There we go. Okay. Then the next change comes um, down to compensation for polling site judges and tellers, section 10. Under subsection C, compensation. The polling site judges and tellers for each polling site shall be compensated at the rate of $200 per day plus mileage and shall be provided lunch and dinner meals from the budget of the commission. Polling site judges and tellers, however, shall not be paid for more than six working days during the primary and general elections and no more than three days during any special election. Is that one okay? Yes, it looks good. Okay. Moving on down to um, 
Section 11, independent monitor, subsection E, work schedule and compensation for independent monitors. Independent monitors shall work and be paid $200 per day plus mileage for the scheduled election days and for the days de designated as orientation and training days. Meals shall also be provided the independent monitors from the election commission budget. Is that one okay? Looks good. Okay. Under uh, section 12 reapportionment, uh, subsection B reapportionment of council representatives based on district census. Upon receipt of a completed census by May 31st or July 1st of the year in which the general election is held, the tribal council shall review and approve where appropriate the census and determine the number of representatives to which each district is entitled to, entitled to pursuant to Article 3, Section 4 of the tribal constitution. So I think this one here was highlighted because we needed to make a decision on whether it would be May 31st or July 1st. I think it should be July 1st because that would give the commission a month to be to get oriented and everything. Did you hear that, Ryan? July yeah. 1st. Getting it. Take the highlight off. Okay, moving on uh, under. Yes, Councilwoman Sears. Yeah, um, that part of it, what, what does that uh, mean? Is that when the, the school census is gonna come to us, the voting, and if they're below having two or having three or whatever, or whatever. do they move back down to a one council rep or no council rep or how does that work? What's What does that really mean? Okay, so section 12 reapportionment, A, authorization for district councils to conduct census and compile voters list in accordance with article three, section four and article six of the tribal constitution, the district councils are hereby authorized and delegated authority to conduct a census on a district basis to determine the number of representatives to which each district is currently entitled. The district shall compile a district voters list from their district census. B, reapportionment of council representatives based on district census. Upon receipt of a completed census by July 1st of the year in which the general election is held, the tribal council shall review and approve where appropriate the census and determine the number of representatives to which each district is entitled to pursuant to article three, section four of the tribal constitution. So yeah, it would be whether, you know, it's an increase or decrease, the council would review and determine. Thank you. Councilman Steele. Yeah, I got a question for attorney. Um, Ryan, remember in our discussions we talked about and we said we would bring it here to the council and, and um, back back when we first initiated this and we put the monitors in there, it was to, to allow them to sit in these positions where they would determine someone's identity if they didn't have proper identification and they wouldn't turn our people away from the polls. If you look at our our um, election outcome every year, we don't get that much voters, and it's like we we kind of we kind of help out by not allowing individuals to vote because of, um, a lot of our people don't have identity cards, and so did, did we didn't we discuss that in law and order that we would bring that here to allow? Yes, um, and it's it's next. It's okay. right next. Okay. okay. Section 13 voters and voter lists. Um, voters, there, so there's no changes to Section A on voters. Um, 
and that just states to be eligible to vote in the overall Sioux primary, general, and special elections, an individual must meet the following criteria. One, must be an enrolled member of the tribe as defined in Article 2 of the Constitution as amended. And number two, meet, must meet the tribal constitutional requirements to vote as set forth in Article 7, Section 1 of the Constitution, which states all members of the tribe 18 years or over who resided on the reservation for a period of one year immediately prior to any election shall have the right to vote. And then the change comes in number three, all voters must present to precinct judge or teller a valid identification and by the Oglala Sioux tribe, a state or federal agency. And then all forms of identification must have a picture of the individual on it. So that was the kind of the debate and that's, there was no decision at the committee level. They thought they'd bring it to council to, to make that determination of how, you know, what the requirement will be. Does that, yeah, Councilman Puyo? But don't most of our people have picture IDs if they wanted that thousand dollars that we gave them an incentive? I mean, so they should have IDs. I think it still says must have a picture of the indiv individual on it in there that wasn't taken out. So it's still in there. Yes, Councilman. Thank you, Madam Vice Chair. You know, um, I think just about everybody has a, a tribal ID at this time. I know there was a uh, um, stash of money orders found recently with with the enrollment office where um, individuals didn't were had paid for their uh, tribal IDs, and um, I, I don't know the situation there but I know during the the time when the checks were coming out um, there were individuals that came that we helped get IDs so I really do think that everybody has a tribal ID at this point you know I I, I do and it and it shouldn't be expired but I, I think um, everybody could probably produce a tribal ID Councilwoman Whitehorse, did you have your hand up? I, I, I think, um, and she did say we did, but we paid for everybody's first tribal ID, remember? So that really shouldn't, yeah. So are, we, yeah. are we okay with how this is written? Okay. Ryan, um, I'm going to ask that, because um, we have 14, so we are holding on to a quorum. But I'm going to ask that instead of reading the whole paragraph, you kind of give us a summary of, of either what's deleted or what's added um, to the section so that we can move through these, please. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, so we're looking at the next section on um, voter lists. Let's see. Okay, rights a voter to request the commission to add the voters' names to the voter list, and they tick out um, the last sentence or paragraph in there that says, in order to minimize the number of petition petitioning voters, the election commission shall meet with the enrollment office every six months to update the eligible voter list for each district. So they just tick that out. Um, it says, uh, so that, uh, the enrollment office is going to um, still work with the districts um, for the on the enrollment list. Let's see further down. Number four, ownership of voter lists. Uh, it was just added that um, the Ogallala Sioux Tribal Court System is allowed to use the eligible voter list only for purposes of jury selection, but only upon a written request submitted to the election commission or in the absence of the election commission, the request may be made to the tribal secretary. And then the next change, if there, nobody objects to that one, is that all right? I'm gonna go on. Uh, criminal background checks and drug tests for candidates. All candidates for a tribal office shall submit to criminal background checks, which, which criminal background check will be conducted by 
the tribal courts, OSP Department of Corrections, and federal PACER account at the election office. And so that's the only change. It took out the Human Resources Department and replaced it with those three um, things for the background check. Um, let's see. The next change. Um, Excuse me. So, yep, Councilman Dillon. I got a, a problem with them with the impeachment restrictions. Okay. I believe if you reach public trust, you shouldn't have a hold office again. That that's uh, that's. You know, when you run for public office, you put your everything of ever you and everything that you hold in public trust. And when you breach that, how do you get a, to cleanse that? How does that happen? You know, I believe that it should be taken out and left the way it was. I don't believe. I don't believe you should be allowed to run after you've been impeached. I've got a problem with that because uh, you violated the constitution of the tribe while in office. And to me, that is wrong. There's, there's no coming back from that because it's a public trust. And uh, if we're here to amend it, I would like to make a motion to amend it to that effect. So I have a motion by Councilman Dillon to amend the impeach, impeachment restrictions or require you have restrictions. We got a second by Councilwoman Spottebear and Councilman Watkins. Do you want to, yeah. and, and Councilwoman Carlo, um, yeah. Councilman Dillon, do you want to specify what your change is going to be? You do have the seconds. My change would be that if you are impeached, you can no longer run or hold public office of the Ogallala Sioux Tribe because okay. of the breach of public trust. Okay, so we do have a motion, a second. Councilman Still, do you have a comment? You know, I don't, I don't agree with that. You know, the way this, I, I don't even, I don't trust this council to determine my eligibility. You know, when it, I mean, if I'm, if I'm eligible to run according to this code, and, and if this body, I mean, I've been through this kangaroo court. You know, I presented evidence on my behalf that proved my innocence. And because of politics, this body can get rid of you. See, not done in the past. And there's no way that that should be allowed to, to be, to, to have an effect on your whole political career. Because it's not, it's not based on, you know, the complaints. It's not, it's based on politics when it gets to this circle. Because I could sit here with all the evidence to prove my innocence, but because a majority don't like me because of who I am, then they're going to get rid of me. And then because this body got rid of me, I'm not allowed to run for the rest of my life, which is wrong. So I don't, I don't support that in any way. Councilman Spotted Bear. Thank you, Madam Bison. I'd like to respond. Um, so I agree that if you've lost the public's trust, and you were impeached, that means a, a full trial has, has been reached and you were removed from office, that you should not be allowed to run for any public position again. And to say that, you know, you don't trust this council, we've had so many complaints brought forth on a lot of the rep representatives here that were false, that were opinionated, that were, um, uh, misrepresenting in regards to how they were brought. And I think we, we did the representative justice by ensuring that we read all documentation and listened to all sides. And um, when a complaint was brought on you, you were not removed, uh, but it was, con it was looked at as there were some areas that needed to be I guess, uh, cleaned up and, you know, maybe it shouldn't have happened this way, but the person re requested a full impeachment. Um, and sometimes we do, especially newer representatives that come into office, uh, they, they take on more than they, they like, they don't intend to, but it looks in the perception of someone else that we're overstepping our boundaries. So then they come back and say, well, we want to impeach you because you're using your position. 
but and that's just simply not the case. So if you were accused, impeached, and removed, you should not be allowed to run for a, a position for the public again because as council representatives, we are, the, uh, we are supposed to have the highest morals, the highest ethics, and the highest um, standards for our people to follow and to adhere to. I mean, we're setting laws and making laws for 50,000 enrolled members across 3.2 million acres of land. We speak at DC on the highest levels um, with the Congress up there, our congressional delegates up there. We have Councilman Sears and then Councilman Steele. Yeah, I think, um, you know, the impeachment part, um, I know there's a lot of new ones on council and um, also, you know, people go through this process of impeachment and it's a matter of po politics. If, if they don't like a certain individual, yeah, they're gonna get impeached regardless of what evidence wasn't there. What, you know, if, if they have the votes, that's the way it goes. I've been around to know that, seen it done. So I think that um, myself, even though this does pass and we do put it back in there, it's a law. And then it goes forward. So we can't we can't hold anybody in the past and prohibit them from running anyway. But I'm also gonna say that it's, you know, I don't agree with how it's how it is either, but um, I'm just letting you know that even though you pass it, it's not gonna affect somebody you're trying to keep out, I guess. That's my opinion. Councilman Steele. Uh, uh, Council Representative Sears, that's pretty much what it sounds like they're trying to do is prevent someone from running. Um, I've seen complaints come forward on a lot of council representatives that never even made it to a trial and it was just dismissed. But it's pick and choose who we're going to, to put, give the ax tail to. And I guarantee you, if those complaints came in front of my district government, my district body for my removal, they wouldn't have had a fighting chance here in my district. Those complaints hold water here where, where the law says they come here and you guys dictate that. But you guys ain't the ones who vote me in as a council representative, you're not. You're not the one that votes me in. But you're the one that gets to get rid of me and then you're the one that could get rid of me for life if I'm impeached. And that's taking the right away from my people. If those complaints came in front of my district, I guarantee you they wouldn't have made it far. And that's what I'm saying here. It's, it's, it's a separate body who votes for us. You can't take that from the people in your district, but that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to take away the right to run from people's districts, respective districts. If they like Alajon and Pine Ridge and they continue to vote for her, that's her, peop her people in Pine Ridge, that's their right. I ain't gonna take that away from them, but that sounds like what we're trying to do today is take the rights of your people away from your respected districts by saying you can't run for office if this body impeaches you, this political body. If, if that's the case, then give your districts the opportunity to hear those complaints on you because I know I would have been supported my, by my people here. Okay. Thank you for the comments. We still have a motion and some seconds on the floor. So any other comments or concerns before we move forward with the vote? Hearing or seeing none, Madam Secretary, can you call the vote please? Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Well, no. Carl Whitehorse? No. Ryan Jumpin' Eagle Sr.? No. Oh. oh, my God. Gerald Knoyer Jr.? Yes. Austin Watkins Sr.? Tyler Yellowboy? 
What's the vote on? Um, the the vote is on the impeachment requirement that if you are impeached, you can no longer be eligible to run for office due to the violation of the Constitution and public trust. No. Wendell Youngman Jr. Yes. Ron Dubray. Oh. James Cross. We lost James. James Cross. Ella John Carlo. George Dreamer Jr. Yes. Jillian Spotted Bear. Yes. Richard Ironcloud. Yes. David Puyer. Yes. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Yeah. Jackie Sears. Yeah. Garfield Still. No. Craig Dillon. Council that passes nine yes, eight no, one not voting. So Ryan, did you get that um, motion and for the for that section? Okay, so it reads now any person who was impeached from the office of tribal president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, fifth member, sergeant at arms, or council representative is ineligible to run for any tribal office. Councilman Dillon, does that look good to you? Yep, okay. Moving on to the next one, Ryan. Okay, let's see. All right, we are now under uh, the chief judge section, uh, resignation required from any other boards due to conflict of interest. Uh, oh no, wait, no. That's separate, that's still, this is still under the candidates. Um, so what they did here was uh, resignation required from any other boards due to conflict of interest. They added to it uh, for any, uh, it would be a conflict of interest if anyone serves on any reservation school board or serves on a nonprofit board serving the reservation. So that was added. Councilwoman Whitehorse. Does it say anything about state boards? Yeah, so if, if you want me to, I'll read the whole paragraph. It says, it is a conflict of interest for any individual to hold the position of president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, fifth member, or council representative at the same time that the individual serves on any district council or any state, county, or tribal board or commission, or serves on the board of directors of any tribally chartered organization, and then added, or serves on any reservation school board or serves on a nonprofit board serving the reservation. Thank you. Looks good, Ryan. Okay, I'm just gonna correct the spell on that one, okay. Um, and then uh, we got some highlighted parts, limitation on filing for office. <clears throat> an individual shall only be allowed to take a nominating petition out and be a candidate in any tribal election for only one of the tribal positions listed herein. President, vice president, secretary, treasurer, fifth member or tribal council representative. This limitation does not prevent an, a an unsuccessful candidate for one of the listed positions from seeking a local district government position. And I can't remember why that was highlighted. Um, Ryan. Yeah. I think what was brought up was um, that if you didn't get any council or um, 
treasurer, or fifth member, or president, whatever, you was able to run for another position? Question. Yeah, Councilwoman Sears. I think it just needs to stay the same. Yes, you know, if, if you lose, then you just lose. It's part of the election. Councilman Puyer. At, at that law and order meeting, it was opened up because the tribal constitution supersedes because it says in there that you can run, you can be appointed from outside or within the tribal council. So why is an individual on the outside treated any different than the people on the inside on the council? And that, that's why we wanted to put it so that we even changed, I think, one recommended to whoever the uh, election commission would be to change that date for the closing of it after the general election. I don't know how many of us out there that day, but we talked about it. Does that uh, ring a bell, Rianne? Councilman Steele? Um, yeah, on Article 3, Section 6, it says the officers of the Tribal Council shall be a president, vice president, elected by the members of the Wallace Tribe at large, and a secretary, a treasurer, and such other officers as may be deemed necessary, elected by the Tribal Council from within or outside of its own number, officers selected from outside the membership of the, of the council shall have no vote in the council except that the president shall vote in case of a tie. So the constitution allows, allows you to be a councilman and fifth member treasurer or secretary in the same term. The constitution allows it. We're sitting here talking about violating the constitutions and upholding it and whatnot, but this is this is allowable in the constitution so what we're saying is that we're not trying to allow that to happen we're just saying that if you were unsuccessful that you could still run for either of those um three positions because the constitution allows it, it allows you to be both ran yeah that's that's what they were discussing. And I think it was, so if, if a person doesn't get selected for one of the tribal positions, um, they should be allowed to run for uh, the tribally, tribal council appointed position. So secretary, treasurer, fifth member. So if they were unsuccessful in running for, for a council or president or vice president, they would still be eligible to run uh, be selected, be appointed by council for those other positions. That was the discussion that I recall, so. Okay, so that highlighted stays as is. I recommend it does. Is that you, Councilwoman Sears? Yes. Okay. So does that um, highlighted portion stay as is then? No, I think, I think in law and maybe. order, we recommended that you, you'll be allowed to to run for those positions if you're unsuccessful in a primary election, correct? A primary or general, and then you could still run for either or one of those positions because like we stated, the constitution allows it. So if they're running, wanting to run for more than one position, um, we are asking for it to be allowed to run for more than to, to, to take out a nominating position for other positions. But not just the one. Other ones are only letters of intent. They're not petitions. <laughs> for a secretary, treasurer, fifth member. Right, they're only letters of intent. They're not petitions. Okay, so secretary, well, treasurer, and fifth member, you're wanting to allow any unsuccessful candidate to run for those or to submit 
to be eligible for those positions if they're unsuccessful. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah, Councilwoman okay. uh, Whitehorse, and we have Councilwoman Spotted there. So I think you just take out Secretary, Treasurer, and Fifth Member from that sentence there and move it down. Yeah, just like that. That's good, right there. I'm done. Councilman Spotterbear. Does that include the boards as well? Which boards are you referring to, Councilman? Such as the um, housing, the allocations, the veterans, the all the other boards that are out there that are ran on a public vote. I think they have their own elections. Okay, thank you. I have a comment. Yes, Councilman. You know, I think we should take a vote on this because I'm just out, out uh, spoken here. I'm just the only one, I guess, that spoke. And, but um, uh, from what I understand, it came to council because they couldn't decide in um, law and order. That's why it's here. That's right. That's why it was highlighted because it was discussion. There wasn't any um, decision made on it. Well, so, I'm gonna make a motion that we keep it the same, the same as it was and not change it. That's my motion. So there's a motion on the floor um, and I do have a couple hands up, but we'll do the comments and I'll see if you get a second. So we got Councilwoman Whitehorse and then Councilwoman Carlo. I was just going to motion the opposite. So we'll see if we get a second. Uh, do we have a second for Councilwoman Sears leaving it as is? Comment. Yes, Councilwoman. Yeah. yeah, you know, I think when you say leave it the same, is that uh, the way it's running now when you're on executive board, you ran for executive board, but you didn't make it in. So uh, you get to run, oh, you ran for council or uh, let's say president or vice and didn't make it in. So now you're allowed to run for the uh, executive board positions. Is that what we're talking about? Yes. yes. And what was the comments on it? Everybody agreed they want to keep it the same or are they gonna um, change it to letting them allow allow them to run. Councilman Whitehorse. Jackie's motion was to not allow people to run if they were unsuccessful in the primary for those positions. Right, Jackie? Yes, keep it the same. So her motion is to not allow them to submit their letters of intent on the secretary, treasurer, or fifth member if they're unsuccessful. Or sergeant at our, oh, fifth member, sorry. I think um, the last, uh, last administration, I think what we did was we, that came forward to the tribal council and it was allowed, I think, uh, to oh, it have uh, a- It was wasn't allowed. It wasn't allowed last election, Councilman. No, I, I mean, it wasn't allowed at the beginning of the election, but it was after. Afterwards, we had uh, Mr. Puyer, who uh, did come in front of the council with that to uh, to run for the, um, uh, the sergeant at arms. Councilwoman, um, and White Horse is saying that was two terms ago. So it might have been a different election no. code. No, 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 it was last term. It was last term, Cora. It was last that, term when uh, Mr. Puyer was put in. The, I think the one it example during, uh, last term was when Ms. Spotted Bear ran for Chair, district. Let's get a point of order and get to this one. We're yeah, so do we have a second? Yeah, I'll just run it. Yeah. Do we have, well, we don't have a second yet. Do we have a second to leave it as is? Any, any hands up on that? 
Councilman Sears, we're looking at the Zoom to see if there are any seconds. Okay, so any second going once, second going twice, motion fails for no second. So we have another motion by Councilwoman Whitehorse. Yeah, my motion is to um, allow unsuccessful candidates for the positions of president, vice president, or tribal council to submit nominating petitions for oh, letters of intent for secretary, treasurer, fifth member, or sergeant at arms. And um, Graham, there should be a sergeant at arms in there after fifth member. So we have a, a motion on the floor by Councilman Whitehorse, a second by Councilwoman Carlo. Any questions or comments? Hearing or seeing none, Madam Secretary, can you call the vote, please? Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Yes. Cora Whitehorse? Yes. Ryan Tempanico, Sr. Yes. Gerald Kenoyer Jr. Yes. Yes. I heard you. Austin Watkins Sr. Tyler Yellowboy. Tyler Yellowboy. Wendell Youngman Jr. Wendell Youngman Jr. Ron DeBray. Oh. James Cross. Ella Giancarlo? Yes. George Dreamer Jr.? Yes. Julian Spotted Bear? Yes. Richard Ironcloud? Yes. David Puyer? Sonia Littlehawk Weston? Ah. Uh, Jackie Sears? Here. Michael Carlo Sr.? Garfield Steele? Craig Dillon? Yes. Council, that passes 15 yes, one no, and two not voting. Um, it looks like most people are taking their own breaks, so we'll take five so people can do what they need to do and stretch. It's been a long day, and then we'll come back to this. So take about five to ten, and we'll come back. Thank you. <laughs> 